Hi, thanks for joining us wherever you're watching around the world and a very special welcome to Etihad Stadium in Melbourne, Australia, the final round of the World Grand Prix Series for season 2016. And what a season it has been. It's a year that has seen seven different winners in the World Championship thus far. I'm joined in commentary for this one by a legend of the sport, former triple world champion Jason Crump, as the riders are now being introduced. Thanks very much, David. It's great to be here. Uh, you did look very quick on the bike yesterday, cutting some laps around here, Jason Crump. Yeah, and it was it was great fun. And as I've said many times, uh, yeah, there's there's the World Championship points. You can see Greg Greg Hancock's lead there is considerable over Jason Doyle, but even more so over Ty Wolfenden. It would take an absolute disaster for Greg to lose tonight, and an absolute perfect performance from either Ty or Bartos Smaslik to to steal the crown from him. So the veteran American certainly has one and three quarter hands on the trophy already. We won't see the great American in action. There he is on screen until heat number four. The starters for heat number one, Slovenia's Matej Zagar will ride in red. Peter Kittleman from Denmark in blue from two. Ty Wolfenden will appear. Gate three, the white helmet colour. And Sweden's Andreas Jonsson will start on the outside. Of course, there are 20, 20 qualifying heats. Then the two semi-finals to be contested by the top eight qualifiers. And the all-important grand final to decide the QBE Insurance Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix champion. Track rode superbly in practice. Many people believe this track last year was the finest temporary surface on the World Grand Prix Series trail. Can't argue with that. And Ollie Olsen and his hard-working crew have produced the goods again. Yeah, absolutely. The track when I was on there, um, nothing to complain about. A couple of little ripples, but these guys are the best in the world, so they'll be able to deal with that. Uh, it's going to make for some exciting racing tonight, that's for sure. It's a change of bikes for Andreas, actually. He's just made a practice start on one bike and come back and, and changed already. So obviously not completely happy with how that bike felt. Was Matty Zagar in his early 30s, somewhat of a veteran now, capable of anything on his night. As regular followers of this series would be well aware. So Zagar lining up on the inside. Tremendous atmosphere at Melbourne's Etihad Stadium ahead of heat number one in the season finale. So here are the starters for heat one, reiterating. Zagar in red, the inside. Hilderman, blue from gate number two. Great Britain's Ty Wolfenden, white from three. And Sweden's Andreas Jonsson in yellow from gate number four. Four laps of fury about to unfold at Etihad. If you've just joined our coverage, I am David Tapp, and beside me, the legendary Jason Crump, three times world champion for expert insight throughout the night. And a start is imminent in Heat 1. Can't wait. Greg Hancock, watchful to see exactly what the track does during the commencement of hostilities. Jonsson so fast on his night. Ty Wolfenden has had three pretty ordinary Grand Prix by his lofty standards heading into this season finale in Australia. Zagar closest to camera. Away in the first race of the Australian Speedway Grand Prix. Not a lot of racing room on the first corner. A rider has gone down. And that is the Dane. Peter Kittleman has hit the dirt after 100 metres. Not the ideal way to start the night, that's for sure, but it was a, it was nothing spectacular. That's just a bit of an overslide for Peter there, and uh, here we go again in the replay. Ty Wolfenden made a fantastic start. Zager and Kilderman off the... Oh, oh a, tap from, a tap from Zager's rear end uh, to Kilderman's front wheel there. Helped him on his way a little bit, so um, probably a little bit more to it. Here we go again. Yeah, clearly a tap from the inside, so just enough to make the bike overslide, but... Uh, 
a fantastic start from Ty Wolfenden there off gate three. Not normally a place you would choose to be in race one, that's for sure. He's, yeah, clearly across the riders on the inside and Andreas Jonsson had a go there on the outside, so that bodes well. Heat one, guys being able to get out and use all, use most of the track already. I might point out too, at this event last year, there was only one race won from gate two the entire night. So it's proving to be slightly unlucky. Certainly Peter Kilderman would agree with that. Yeah, and again, gate two and three are normally not the favoured group positions, especially early on in the night. And I guess by the stats, not the place you wanted to be at Etihad Stadium at any point of the night last year. We have the restart of heat one in less than one minute's time. So we bring the four back to the start line. Race restart. And once again, we recap the stay out of starters rather. Zagar red, Kilderman blue, Wolfenden white, Yotson in yellow from the outside. Can Ty do it again? He got away from the start brilliantly. When the tapes rose, first time of asking. Seconds away from this race restart. You look at the Dane. Zagar from Slovenia. Red helmet colour. Underway again in heat one. And Wolfenden has got an absolute flyer from gate number three. And the outgoing world champion takes the race lead in advance of the Slovenian Matej Zagar. Really giving Ty Wolfenden some hurry up there as they come off turn four and back down the main straight. Fantastic start from Ty again. He, he did it the first time from gate three and he's managed to pull it off again. But he doesn't look that quick on the track. It's maybe a little bit slicker at this stage than we thought and the inside line's looking quick. Zager's putting him under plenty of pressure around the inside. Andreas Johnson not far away either. The top three only separated by about 10 metres as they charge down the back straight on lap number three. Wolfend and the race leader, Zager, applying plenty of pressure. He sneaks a lot closer there as they go across the start finish line. One lap to go here, and Wolfend is under siege. Will Zager have a crack up high on the circuit? He probably isn't close enough. And the 2015 world champion, Ty Wolfenden, takes the win in heat number one. Zagar second, Andreas Jonsson third, and Kilderman out the back, Jason. Kilderman completely missed the start again. Completely the opposite of the race winner, that man there, Ty Wolfenden. Picture perfect off the start both times. And uh, you have to say, in that race, Matty Zagar looked very quick behind him. I, um, I was a little bit surprised. I thought Ty would have been able to stretch it a little bit. But as we saw, Zagar stuck with him the whole race. And Jonsson was having a good go as well there. So good, good start to the night for Ty and a, a positive start for Zagar too. Yeah, three points for Wolfenden. Two to Zagar. Jonsson picking up the one and Hildeman. No points in his opening ride tonight after hitting the deck in the initial race start. We look at Ty Wolfenden in the pits. Trip. Very hard worker off the track is Ty. His work with charities has been well documented. Should we watch this again, Jason? Yeah, Ty was perfect off the start there. Absolutely perfect. To, to be able to make two starts in a row like that off start position three is very impressive. He's showing us his intent very early on. Matty Zagar crept around the curb here and actually generated a lot of speed right here. I, I actually thought he was going to have a go at Ty there, but um, you could see Ty's bike wasn't actually hooking up down the straight. He was drifting sideways for a long way down there, and that's not the way to make speed on a speedway bike. Uh, but no doubt, words of wisdom coming from Peter Carlson. There'll be some, some changes to the machine, I'm sure, and uh, searching for a little bit more speed for sure. He's a great man to have in your corner, isn't he? PK, Peter Carlson vastly experienced, rode at the Grand Prix Series for a number of years and, as I alluded to earlier, still getting the job done in the British Elite League at age 47. So it's now time for heat number two. And we see here the young Australian, left-hand side of your screen, the wild card, wearing the famous number 16 race jacket, the current Australian champion, Brady Kurtz. There he is. What a moment for Brady. He's... Um 
bit nervous yesterday during practice, but hopefully we can see the best of him here. And we've also got our other Aussie, Chris Holder, in. So there's the field. Janowski from Poland. Jepsen Jensen from Denmark. Chris Holder from Sydney, Australia. Brady Kurtz from Cowra in country New South Wales. Chris Holder will be wanting to make a, rip, a copy start like Ty Wolfen just did from gate three, that's for sure, Dave. Yep, he'll be brimming with confidence after seeing what Ty Wolfen had achieved in the previous race. So here we are, heat number two. Away, Holder started okay. You'll find the Dane though, Jepsen Jensen got away best in the blue helmet colour. Janowski also quickly into stride. He runs in second in the red helmet colour. Kurtz is on the inside of his compatriot, Chris Holder. And here comes Holder now, the 2012 world champion. Oh, threading the eye of the needle. Up on the inside into second, great move on Janowski. But the pole comes back at him. That's the Chris Holder we want to see. Chris has shown his intent from the first turn there. He put himself in a position and he's riding. This is a, this is a Chris Holder of old. Fantastic start from Michael Jepsen Jensen. We didn't think position two was very good, but maybe it was just killed him. And he's Jepsen Jensen's away and looking very, very fast. But Chris Holder has fought his way through to second place. And the pace is a cracker out there. Last racing lap now in heat two. And Jepsen Jensen leads them comfortably, really. Holder is giving it everything in second as they sweep through the top turns for the final time. And Jepsen Jensen from Denmark takes the race winner. Chris Holder in second. And Maciek Janowski from Poland in third. Out the back was young Brady Kurtz, who has probably never ridden that fast in his life. Well, there was a bit of contact. Brady and Chris actually, I think, made a bit of contact off corner two there. but. Um, Nice, nice start from Michael Jepsen Jensen the, there and uh, a great race from Chris Holder. It's great. I'm so happy for Chris. He's, um, you know, he's, he's put that put that together and that's a great start for him. Recapping them, Jepsen Jensen, Holder, Janowski. There's the Dane. He's done a good job over an extended period and he's pumped as you can see delighted with that look at this start from Jepsen Jensen off too oh perfect beautiful start Chris actually had a bit of contact with him and he's gone past the corner there contact there again from Brady Kurtz uh, yeah Chris overlocked a lot there and put oh oh actually that was more than a bit of contact wasn't it <laughs> That was serious contact and could have been nasty. Chris had a lot to do, didn't he? He did. He found himself in last position there into the third and fourth bend for the first time and managed to get around the outside of Brady. Very clever move. Cut back up the inside of Janowski into the corner and put himself in a great position to, to secure a, a good second place in, in race one. Showing plenty of aggression. The 2012 world champion, Michael Jepsen Jensen on screen. He's looking pretty happy with things. Yeah, he's wrapped as well he might be. So it is time for the third heat. We're in the first round of heats here at Melbourne's Etihad Stadium. And another crack field involved in the action here, including Australia's Sam Masters, who gets yet another chance at Grand Prix level after a sensational season in Europe. Scored five points in this event last year, Masters. That's him on the left-hand side of screen. So it's Harris in red, Smarslik in blue, Everson in white, Masters in yellow. Great Britain. On the inside, Smarslik, this rider on screen, so fast. At practice yesterday, he was scary to watch. Here's the form rider, in my opinion, Niels Christian Everson. This will be some race. Tapes in the air and we are away again. And Smarslik, the pole, got a terrific start. Gate two is performing brilliantly tonight. Have a look at this on the extreme outside. Sam Masters, the awesome Aussie, is winding up the horsepower, having a big crack at the race lead. Nils Christian Everson is third. This is a terrific race, as we forecast it would be. Masters looking up on the inside of Smarslik, crummy. Sam Masters didn't make the best of starts from gate four there, but was very, very clever on the first turn and got a great run. Here comes Niels Christian Everson putting Sam under pressure. Oh, he's got him up the inside. But Sam's turned back. He's having a 
and no, not quite. Didn't quite manage it. So Bartos Marslik leads this field. Nils Christian Everson, block busting charge into second place. Masters relegated a spot. And Great Britain's Chris Harris is out the back. You can see the gap between first and fourth. Bartos Marslik, one of the world's quickest riders, and the chequered flag flies. That's not that's not a surprise because as you said, he was fast in practice yesterday. Good effort by Sam Masters and a good ride by Niels Christian Everson there to overhaul him for a, for a crucial second place. Smarslik has already been in seven Speedway Grand Prix finals in his young career. That's amazing. Three points to him, two to Niels Christian Everson, one to Australia's Sam Masters and Great Britain's Chris Harris rounding out that four rider field. The QBE Insurance Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix from Melbourne's Etihad Stadium. One more race to conclude the first round of heats. Bartos Smarslik there. He'd be feeling pretty happy with himself. That was a fantastic ride. And here we can take a look at the start again. Bartos made a, a, a pretty fair start there. Had to get across Chris Harris. But have a look at Sam Masters here in the yellow. He's going for the big one right around the outside. And it almost looked like it was going to pay off. From the reverse view there, you can see Bartos had a clear run into the corner. And here goes Sam around the outside. So, yeah. Sam's in second place here. And he, he actually looked like he was having a good go up the inside of Bartos, but uh, didn't quite manage to pull that off and lost a place to Niels. Lovely super slow-mo shot of the pole in full flight. Beautiful pictures emanating from Etihad Stadium. Good to have you with us wherever you're watching our coverage around the world. Fox Sports in Australia and many other countries around the globe live into Europe. Greg Hancock, there he is, leading the World Championship on 134 points in advance of Doyle and Wolfenden. And Greg comes to the tapes. You're looking at him now. If he wins this heat, he will have an unassailable lead and be crowned World Champion for the fourth time. Yeah, uh, Greg's got a thousand and one things going through his mind at the moment. It's a it's a position that uh, it's a it's a tough position to be in. You know, it's um, I've been there and, and there's nothing worse than these moments just before you come under starters orders. There's so many things running through your mind. And I'm sure with even with Greg's experience, he'll be suffering a little bit at the moment for sure. Well said, Jason. So Hancock rides in white from gate three. You look at him, the legend. It's a hot field again. Lindgren from Sweden on the inside. Lindback from Sweden out of gate two. And Linky, the pole on the outside in yellow. Away we go. Hancock got away beautifully. Has he got to the front? Indeed, he has. Here's a rider up high on the circuit. Pav Linky. And Pav Linky, the pole, has the audacity to pass Greg Hancock on the outside. They're side by side onto the main straightaway. And also very quick is Sweden's Frederick Lindgren. What a race in heat four. What a first turn from Pavlicki. Here comes Greg. Greg's come up the inside of Pavlicki there. That's the world championship. Greg Hancock at 46 years of age means business. Does he ever Pavlicki in second? He's not done with just yet. Lap three of four. And have a look at these two at the back. Lindgren and Lindback racing each other. Yeah, a couple of Swedes working each other over. Yellow flag. One lap of it. He had stadium to negotiate. Greg Hancock, if he stays where he is, he will be the 2016 World Speedway Champion. The fourth time he has achieved such a milestone and off turn four, he's done it again. Greg Hancock <laughs> is the World Champion for the fourth time. What, and what a way to do it. He, he fought and put himself in a position there where he had to overtake Pavlicki and look at him, absolutely wrapped for Greg. Thoroughly deserves it, outstanding professional. Uh, what more can you say about the man? He's an absolute freak. <laughs> For his age, he is an extraordinary athlete, and he thoroughly deserves it. A nicer man you would never meet. Works so hard on and off the track. One of the all-time greats. You say, Greg, he is a nice guy, but there's one thing that Greg is. He's a hard but fair competitor, and Greg's... Greg's respected by almost every rider in the world because of the way he's conducted himself on and off the track. He was a pleasure to race against in, in, 
in my heyday, you know, Greg and I fought hard for race wins and championships along the way and uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I know it seems, I suppose, strange celebrating the World Championship after this four heats, but of course, it's vital you keep watching. There are so many other things to unfold here tonight. Here's his Greg team. Hancock, the adulation from his crew and the fans. Gee, I wish you'd have a good time, Greg. He doesn't look happy. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> they call him the Grin, that's his nickname. And right now, can I tell you something? He's smiling like a carpet snake in a foul house. <laughs> yeah, um, look at that. The mechanics put a hell of a lot of effort in as well, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit a lot for, for the work they do. Ty Wolfenden, outgoing world champion, one of the first on the scene to congratulate him. The thing about Greg Hancock, he is so professional, he'll go back to the pits, he'll take a deep breath, and he'll get his race face back on, and he won't want to lose another race tonight. Yeah, and that's that's a sign of his the way Greg is, you know. It's um, personally, I could never do it. Whenever I got the points to win the championship, I was quite happy to sit down in the pits and pretty much go and ride around. But uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see what it does to Greg tonight. But again, the way he looked in that race, you wouldn't argue against him going through the card, or certainly putting himself into the final in tonight's event. 202 Grand Prix starts, over two and a half thousand points. There's the recap of heat number four for you. Hancock three points, Pavlicki two. And the points thus far in the event. Wins to Wolfenden, Hancock, Jepsen, Jensen, and Smarslik. Oh. 87 Grand Prix Finals he has qualified for in his career for 21 wins and he's averaging Grand Prix competition 12.45 there is no one else even close in the current group of riders yeah Greg Greg's been congratulated I think by everybody in the pits but what a start from the veteran meant business from the word go put himself there thought he was probably in the best part of the track but Young Piot Pavlik, he's gone around the outside of him and to show Greg's commitment to win this championship, he fought back and he managed to overtake the young charger up the inside and the rest history. That's his fourth world championship win, done and dusted. That was his 430th heat win in Grand Prix competition. 430, that's just staggering. I don't know where you're getting these stats from, Dave, but they're pretty impressive. <laughs> Steve Brandon does a great job compiling the stats. The Grand Prix series, and there's the jubilation, jubilation rather, behind the scenes. Track being uh, re-prepped ahead of the second round of heats. I'll put a bit of water on it, you'll find. It was a bit slick in parts. Let's go down to Steve Brandon in the pitch right now. Greg Hancock, job done. You can say that again. I think my voice is gone already. <laughs> and mine. Um, Ivan Major, Tony Rickardson, Barry Briggs, Obi Funden, Hans Nielsen, all won the World Championship four times. You're in that club now. Oh, man, say no more. I, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> this is, like, incredible. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Listen, I'm going to let you gather your thoughts, and we'll catch you again later in the meeting. There is a race meeting on. I'm sure you want to do well on that as well. Eric Gunderson, we made a deal a few weeks back. I want to see you walk, buddy, and I got your helmet. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Well, that's nice. Greg, uh, incredibly emotional, more so than I've ever witnessed before. It shows how much this World Championship means to him, uh, to be able to do it. Um, I know we keep talking about his age. Um, for him to be able to do it at his age is fantastic, and you can clearly see the emotion involved in Greg winning. Uh, what it means to him and a, a lovely gesture there with the words to Eric Gunderson. The final round of the 2016 World Championship. A World Championship that began in Slovenia back in April of this year and the world's top riders have traversed the globe in search of the Holy Grail, the FIM Speedway World Championship. 
during all the celebrations there for Greg Hancock taking the World Championship, we've actually had a bit of track maintenance and they've put a bit of water down. So I'm, I'm predicting we might have a bit of a slippery surface here for this one, David. I think in a couple of races time, I think the track will come become better. But right now, I think there's a little bit of water down. Be interesting to see how it makes the track ride. Bad Licky, there he is on screen. We saw how fast he is. He took it right up to Greg Hancock in heat race number four. Returning for action here. Right hand side of screen. Shot of the considerable crowd at Etihad Stadium in the background of that wide shot. Here's Matchek Janowski, the pole. Terrific swashbuckling rider. A lot of courage. And of course, was a finalist in this corresponding event last year. You look at the pole in the meantime, the other pole, Pavlicki, heat race number five. So Pavlicki in the red helmet colour from gate one, Zagar in blue from gate two, Janowski in white from three, and Christian Everson, the Dane, in yellow from gate number four. It's going to be a very, very tough run to the first corner here for uh, Niels Christian Everson off gate four. But gate three has been performing brilliantly, as has gate two. So on that basis, Zagar. And of course, Janowski would be looking forward to the tapes flying. Here we are, heat five. Pavlicki away okay, the chance for the first quarter in 10. Zagar didn't get the best of starts. We can see here Janowski, the pole, and his compatriot Pavlicki on the outside. No, in fact, it's Niels Christian Everson, my apologies. The Dane Niels Christian Everson goes to the front. Can he stay there is the big question. Well, I was completely wrong about that, but Niels went straight to the outside dirt line and got himself out of this slick and slimy inside line. Maciek Janowski is putting him under a bit of pressure, but can't quite get to the part of the track that he needs to be on. So one of the real form riders coming into this Grand Prix tonight in Melbourne, Niels Christian Everson leads comfortably in heat. Number five, Janowski is in second, about eight bike lengths behind the race leader. And Pavlicki in third. And uh, something's wrong with Zagar's bike, you'd think. He is really struggling in fourth. You'd have to think so, but a great corner by Piotr Pavlicki to go around the outside of Maciek Janowski. I don't know what Maciek's doing down there on the inside. It's not really the part of the track to be on at the moment, that's for sure. I would think that he could be suffering from something mechanical as well. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of traction down there. Niels Christian Everson found the traction and the fast way. A barnstorming charge to take the race lead after missing the gate. He came from the clouds and swept around the outside to take the lead. So Christian Everson, he picked up two points in his opening ride tonight, now gets three points in his second. Pavlicki, second with two points, 1.2 Janowski in third. And Everson five for the meeting thus far as I've suggested. Pavlicki with four points beside his name after two rides. I thought the outside grid was going to be a bit of a hindrance there for Niels. He didn't get the best of uh, the best of starts from the word go. But as we can see in the replay here, he's gone pretty much with Janowski a little bit behind him. But from this point on in the corner, you can see he's on the darker, drier dirt on the outside there. And he just, just manages to generate enough speed to pull it across the front of Maciek on the way into turn three. And to be honest, once Niels got in front, he actually looked quick. He was carrying a lot of speed, building his momentum up. As the race progressed, Janowski started to pull himself closer and closer to the inside, giving Pavlicki the opportunity to repeat the sort of move that Niels pulled off earlier in the race. Winner of heat race number five on screen, Niels Christian Everson, did it in fine style. Tonight, his 70th Grand Prix start. He's had five wins in his career. And here's the starters now in heat number six. Lynn back from Sweden, red helmet, colour gate one. Harris, Great Britain, blue gate two. Kilderman, Denmark, white gate three. Chris Holder, yellow gate four. Australia on the outside. I'm looking forward to see Chris Holder pull a similar sort of manoeuvre as Niels Christian Everson pulled there on the first turn. He'd be actually rubbing his hands together having gate four. I predicted wrong. I didn't think it was going to work too well, but it worked a treat. So Chris is in the place to be at the moment. Let's just hope we see the same Chris Holder with the same amount of aggression as he carried in his first race. 
the 2012 world champion from Appen, just south of Sydney. Multi-Australian champion. Slowly but surely rediscovering his best form after some horrific injuries. Punctuated his career after winning the championship. Away in heat number six. Lind back got away well on the inside of the red helmet colour. Holder very aggressive. Oh, gee, there's some action in this race on the first lap. Let me tell you, it is all going on. Antonio Lindback from Sweden is the race leader. Back onto the main straight. And Chris Holder involved in an epic tussle for second. Chris didn't make a good getaway. Lindback was away well from the inside. Killed him. <laughs> I don't know what he tried to do there on the first turn, but he almost collected Chris Holder and Chris Harris. Then back out in front, riding on the good line, but here comes Chris Holder. He's starting to generate some speed around the outside. Will he be able to pull oh, back's locked up there? So here comes Chris now. Yeah, Chris got a great run off turn two. He closed the gap somewhat. The Appen Express in pursuit of the Swede here. Across the start finish line, Antonio Lindback is the leader. Holder looking for the big cutback. He comes a bit closer as they head down the back straight. Lindback still in charge. Holder giving it everything. He'll cut back again. The checkered flag is poised. Holder! Yeah. Chris Holder on the inside got the job done. What a ride, Chris Holder. The Aussie has come from the clouds to take the win. Wow. A classic cutback off turn four. Get me a pen at all, Crumpy. I tell you, I, that was a great manoeuvre from Chris. I didn't actually think there was going to be enough grip on the inside line on the exit of turn four, but Chris went in deep and turned the bike so hard, got his wheels in line early and dragged Race Lynn back to the line and beat him, I would say, by about half a wheel length in the end. Well, maybe a bit more, actually, in the end. Fantastic ride by Chris. You, we spoke before the meeting, David, about his determination, and I was so happy to see Chris ride the way he rode yesterday in practice. And, that form has carried over for today. He's had tricky starting positions. He's been off the outside a couple of times. He's going to pull himself back to the inside starting grids, and hopefully that can hold him in good stead for the rest of the night. But it's so good to see Chris Holder racing aggressively again. Just saw a shot there of Shane Parker in the pits working with him. Of course, Shane had a long and distinguished career racing in the UK. So Holder three points, and that takes his tally for the event thus far to five after two rides and the australian very aggressive tonight great to see yeah absolutely there's his, uh, there's his young brother we can see from the start chris wasn't away fantastically well but look at these guys on the inside they're all heading out kilderman's cut back he catches a rut he swings across the... whoa that's tight chris actually was very very lucky you saw him coming there at this point at that point chris was back in third see it from the reverse view it'll be interesting to see there must be a little bit of a rut down there maybe on the inside but the boys are heading out killed him and tried to i'm not sure what he tried there really great well, evasive he tried, he tried to stay on <laughs> when he nearly got thrown off that's what he tried to do. well he, well he did a good job in the end then didn't he good ever so heat seven fantastic race the previous Smarslik, red gate one lingren blue gate two jepson jensen white gate three warfenden Yellow, gate four. Oh, stop it. How good is the field? This will be an absolute screamer. Woffenden, brilliant in his opening ride tonight. Of course, Michael Jepsen Jensen won his opening ride tonight. So did Bartos Marsling. We've got three of our first-time first, race, first -time race winners in this race, and Freddie Lingren th thrown in for good measure. Can't wait. Look at that crowd at Etihad Stadium. Good to have your company wherever you're watching around the globe. Bartos Marsley closest to camera on the inside. The best to begin again. The pole. He's under pressure though. Gee, there's riders ducking and diving, slipping and sliding as they run down the back straight. And Marsley is very much under siege here as they exit turn number four. Great start from Bartos Smarslik there. Very, very clever and experienced first corner. Poor Ty Wolfenden made a bit of a hash at the start there and um, didn't get himself into the right position. Caught himself out a bit there, I think, with the grip. But Bartos Smarslik is carrying on from the way he looked in practice yesterday. He was absolutely flying. 
Because Varslick has come into contact with the fence on the exit to just about every corner in this race so far. Such is his determination to chase the dirt up high on the circuit. Lindgren is in second, doing a good job. In heat race number seven, Jepsen Jensen in third. Ty Wolfenden at the back, and he's struggling to make any impression at the moment. But Martos, Smarslik, Jason Crump, an emerging superstar in this sport, off turn number four, and takes a comfortable win in heat race number seven after a chaotic opening lap. A chaotic opening lap, but a very, very clever opening lap from that man there, Smarslik. It was a very, very experienced manoeuvre he pulled off on the first corner. He knew he had to get out to that grip, the dirt line, and he managed to do it in a smooth and controlled way. Some people would suggest it didn't look that controlled. I thought it was perfectly controlled. When you take into account what Kilderman did in the race before, I thought he did a great job of it. Oh, money. Money messing with you, Jason. So six points for Smarslik. He hasn't dropped a point in his only couple of rides. Gee, he's good, isn't he? Look at that start. He was right there on the inside. Lindgren was in a good position. Ty oh, Ty Wolfenden actually picked up there. OK. And here we go. Smarslik's gone in tight, pushed himself up to the dirt exactly where he needed to be. The guys on the inside actually got away pretty even. Clever corner. He's just, Bartos has just moved out enough. He's not right out where Lindgren is too far. Ties out in no man's land there. Just a great run. Very respectful young man, Bartos Smarslik. And as you said, he's clipping the fence. When you're 19, 20 years old, David, that seems like fun. And he's doing it for fun. You can see that. Beautiful pitches. Bartos Smarslik, right down the name. You're going to be reading and hearing a lot about this boy over the next 15 years. Now heat eight to conclude the second round of qualifying heats. Next on the track, Andreas Johnson from Sweden will ride in red from gate one. Brady Kurtz, the Australian wild card, in blue from gate two. His compatriot Sam Masters from Newcastle in the New South Wales Hunter Valley rides in white from three. And the 2016 world champion for the fourth time in his career, Greg Hancock, California. Yellow helmet, gate number four. It'll be interesting to watch Greg's mindset here in the first lap of this race. We'll certainly be able to see if he's if he came here to win the world championship or if he came here to win the world championship and the Speedway Grand Prix in Australia. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that question. Here we are. The Aussies in the centre. Underway. Let's begin on the inside, Andreas Johnson. And we can see cutting back there on the inside of the speedway, Greg Hancock, but the challenge is on from young Brady Dude. Kurtz. The Aussie, he's gone to the front, the Australian champion, albeit briefly. But the old master, Greg Hancock, has used all of his experience there and used the shortest way around the track to take the lead. Andreas Jonsson coming back at him on the outside now. And Brady Kurtz a bit overzealous there and uh, finds himself at the back. I think he's just trying a little bit too hard at the moment. But I think, up front. I think you're right with Greg Hancock. I think he did come here to win two championships tonight, the World Speedway Championship. We'll see here how desperate he is on the last lap. He drives hard off turn four on the inside of Andreas Johnson, the speed. Looking really fast in this race. Hancock giving it to him on the inside, however. They're separated by a couple of metres as they charge down the back straight. The last time in this one, the Swede is going to get the cash and takes the three points. Andreas Johnson, the victor. Greg Hancock in second. And Brady Kurtz stole third position off Sam Masters on the line there. So Brady earns himself a world championship point. He took the lead there for about three seconds. <laughs> he took the lead. It was a hectic first lap, and Brady certainly put himself in there, but a uh, little bit of inexperience there. The experience of uh, Andreas and Greg showing. Johnson, a great ride, and earning himself three very vital points in the Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Did a wonderful job, had to fend off the challenge from Kurtz, and then, of course, Greg Hancock. It was a great ride by the Swede. There he is, winner of heat race number eight. 
I mentioned earlier in our coverage, the second most experienced rider in the field. Yeah, and no surprise for Andreas to pop out and win a race. He's probably not done as much of that this year as he would have liked, but certainly one of those guys who, when he gets fresh air, he very rarely makes a mistake. And Can I ask you, he's a rider that's been touted. Let's just watch this again, then I'll come back and ask you. You can see Greg Hancock's not really anywhere there off the start. The Aussie boys have certainly headed out for the dirt. Sam Masters got a bit of a push there from Brady, but right here we've got those two on the inside. Brady Kurtz, a fantastic move between the middle of the two of them. From this point here, Sam Masters makes probably as good a start as you're going to make when you're lined up against next to Greg Hancock. Bit of contact there between Kurtz and Masters. Gone a bit too wide, but watch Brady Kurtz here. He picks himself up, he straightens up here, and all of a sudden he'll come into shot at, oh, we just missed it, but uh, there's Andreas and Greg going over the line for first and second, and Brady Kurtz pipping Sam Masters for a point. The race winner there, Andreas Johnson, has been touted many times throughout his career as a potential world champion. Lead race number nine. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying the action of the QBE Insurance. Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. We're now into the third round of qualifying heats. And this race promises to be an absolute cracker. So recapping the starters for you, Chris Holdup, Australia Red Helmet Colour Gate 1. Greg Hancock, the United States of America Blue Gate 2. Matej Zagar, Slovenia, White Gate 3. Bartosz Smarzlik, the unbeaten Bartosz Smarzlik from Poland in the yellow helmet colour, Gate number 4. I guess we're going to really see how much Greg Hancock wants to win the, wants to win the Australian Grand Prix for a third time in this race. I think I can tell you how much that is, David, but um, this is one of those races that you come across in Grand Prix Speedway that just blows you away, I'm sure. Holder has been in terrific form tonight. Comes into his third ride, having amassed a five-point tally with a win in a second. There he is. He'd be quietly confident. Zagar had a disappointing second ride. He'll be looking to make amends. The beer from the pits. Close up now at the start line. Hold up. The Aussie closest to camera. Away. And a great start out of gate two by the American Greg Hancock. His holder on the inside. And also Zagar looking fairly quick on this occasion. Can you believe it? Smarzling is out the back. I'll guarantee he doesn't stay there as they head down the main straight the first time. And well, what more can you say? Greg Hancock, the leader. Greg made a fantastic start off gate two there, and Chris was asleep a little bit, but Smarzlik was off gate four, and he went nowhere. A good ride by Matty Zager, who's shown hold of the front wheel a couple of times, but there's no more words to describe Greg Hancock. We can see how much he wants to win. He's, but he's gone out against two of his toughest competitors in, in this evening's event, and he's dominated it from the word go. Amazing, amazing athlete. Yellow flag on display, one lap of the Etihad venue to run. Chris Holder on the inside takes the lead from the American. Hancock fights back on the outside. It's Australia and America off turn number four. And Holder does it again. Listen to the crowd at Etihad Stadium. What a ride from Chris Holder, the last second king. Greg Hancock looked like he had the race all wrapped up there. I, I, I'm actually thinking that Hancock could have suffered a slight mechanical malfunction with something because he was he was away and gone and on the third lap on the first turn Chris Holder managed to really make a lot of distance on him we could see Greg I think actually look around for a split second so it'd be interesting to find out if there was anything wrong there but a great ride from Chris Holder irrelevant to what happened with Greg Chris looks look at him he's he wants this tonight Tappy you can see that it would be some story if he can do it well, he's giving us all heart failure. The way he's winning his races so late in the <laughs> in the four lap journey, my voice is about gone already. How many heats have we got to what's, go? What's this start from Greg? Just perfect. The way easily away, drifts straight out to the fast line on the first turn. 
checking where everybody is. He's on the grip, wheels in line. Away he goes. Let's take a look at this. Let's see what Greg does here. He's gone and he's online. Oh, he's a bit wide. Looks looks like something could be going on. Has a quick look over. Doesn't look like the normal body position to me for Greg Hancock right there. He has a bit of a go back at Chris, but um, nothing major. The gap there, it's too big. It's too big a gap. I'm sure something's gone wrong there. I don't think Greg missed the line. And right there at that point, Chris is wheels in line and pulled away from Greg to take the win. Great effort. Great to see Chris Holder looking like that and happy with the, with the, with the way he's riding. He just appeared on the big screen, one of the many in this stadium. The crowd went up again. Heat 10 sees Sam Masters from Newcastle in New South Wales. Red gate one. Matchek Janowski, Poland, blue gate two. Frederick Lindgren, Sweden, white gate three. Peter Kilderman, Denmark, yellow gate four. Another cracker in prospect here. Sam will be disappointed with his previous ride. He'll be looking to make amends here. Janowski has been solid tonight, as has uh, Frederick Lindgren. We're yet to see the best of Peter Kilderman in this Grand Prix. I think it'd be fair to say we probably haven't seen the best of any of these four, so it's a chance for one of them to shine. Big 10, they're gone. And Masters began OK. Over on the inside, the battle through the first turn is intense. And Masters is passed on the outside by Janowski originally. And now Kilderman also charging towards the front. This is a terrific race. They are three wide on turn number four. Did you see that? The race leader now in heat race number 10 is Peter Kilderman from Denmark. Well, the guys that were in first and second on the first turn are now back in third and fourth. There was bikes and bodies going everywhere there. Bit of contact between Lindgren and Janowski. Kilderman's out in front, but to me, he doesn't look that quick. Frederick Lindgren putting him under a lot of pressure on the inside. Matrek Janowski back in third place. Doesn't look settled to me, and Sam Masters just struggling a little bit at the moment. Let's see if Freddie Lindgren can get a wind up on Peter Kilderman around the outside. Last lap now. Kilderman the leader. Janowski in all sorts of trouble there. Can Lindgren reel him in? Inside the distance, it would appear not as he cuts back to the inside. And the red and white flag of Denmark takes the win in heat 10. So Peter Kilderman, he needed that badly. So he's dug deep and found three vital points. Didn't make the best of starts, Peter Kilderman, there, and got himself back into a decent position on the exit of the second bend and um, took survived a couple of challenges from the other boys and uh, managed to get the race win which as you said is uh, vital for him at this stage of the meeting so hold up still a top points man in the event thus far eight beside his name the top eight you can see in the qbe insurance australian fim speedway grand prix so far exactly what kilderman needed Let's watch the start. Here we go. Sam Masters and Maciek Janowski off the inside have, have roared out. Kilderman's cut back to the inside, held everybody up, and then there's all sorts of tangles up the back straight. Janowski into the lead. Kilderman round the outside of him. Lindgren up the inside of everybody again. Here we watch it. Janowski's gone probably a little bit too wide. Clever turn there from Peter Kilderman. At this point, Janowski looks like he's about to take take the lead and go away with the race, but Kilderman fought back on the outside and Lindgren fought up the inside. Bit of contact between those two. Lindgren actually nearly went from third to first there. Peter Kilderman. Tonight he's 24th Grand Prix start. Has won two GPs in his career. One would think there are many more ahead as we prepare for action now. In heat racer 11, the Australian champion Brady Kurtz, red gate one, Nils Christian Everson from Denmark, blue gate two, Ty Wolfenden, Great Britain, white gate three, and Sweden's Antonio Lindback, yellow gate four. Tough line up here, tough race for young Brady Kurtz and lining up next to Nils Christian Everson, one of the four men of the meeting tonight. A win here for Niels will put him equal at the top of the points table with Chris Holder after three races. Stiff competition from Antonio Lindback and Ty Wolf. And then, oh no, Brady Kurtz. Bike, bike problem here for Brady Kurtz. I think he's, I think he's 
I think he's broken the chain at the start line. No, that's an disqualification for Brady. Disqualification for Brady. He's exceeded the two-minute time allowance there. So, I just about bet you that his chains, his chain snap. There's no rear chain on the back wheel. An unusual place for that to happen at the starting line. One of those, one of those crazy things that you would, you wouldn't. You would never, ever expect that to happen. So Max Frick will come into the race as uh, the first reserve, the reigning World Under-21 champion. And I'm really happy that he gets a chance to ride here tonight. Current World Under-21 champion, Max won that championship, uh, what are we talking about, a month ago now. Uh, there's the chain, there's the offending chain. Very, very unusual for that to happen, Tappy, before the race has even started, barely under racing orders. But, but as you said, a great, opportun great opportunity for Max Frick to take his first Grand Prix race. Something of a milestone here too, folks. Max Frick is the 200th rider to race in a Speedway Grand Prix World Championship event. The 200th rider, Max Frick tonight, as he comes into this race by virtue of being first reserve following the demise of Brady Kurtz. Let's see how he goes. So here we go. Well, this is a big opportunity for Max. Pretty local boy as well, Tappy. He's from the Melbourne area. And there he is taking his place in gate one. Not a bad starting position to have either in your first Grand Prix race. Let me say that again. The horns around the stadium blowing profusely, Jason Trump. Yeah, absolutely. And uh... so much so that give a pen and all the headache. <laughs> Here we go, Max Frick. Speed 11, Ty Wolfenden back out there. Niels Christian Everson has scored five points in the Grand Prix so far. Away now, and Everson began well in the blue helmet colour, but Wolfenden began better. Wearing the white helmet, he charges down the back straight. Have a look at Antonio Lindback, will you? The Swede on the inside, letting it all hang out and making a real nuisance of himself. He shocks Niels Christian Everson up track. Great move there by Antonio Limbach, but a fantastic start for Ty. Here comes Antonio. Oh, he's got some speed on Ty. So race lead up. And Great Britain's Ty Wolfenden. And here comes Everson. He's not out of it either. Limbach's throwing all he can at Ty Wolfenden. Ty's making a couple of starts, but doesn't look exceptionally quick on track to me. Limbach's going to have a go up the inside here and see what he can do. Ty's gone too wide, Limbach's through. He does a Chris Holder and cuts back brilliantly. Now Wolfenden oh. returns the favour superbly. And the 2015 world champion in front, albeit briefly, as Limbach comes back on the inside. What a race here. Limbach on the line. Flag and the sweet takes it. Antonio Limbach, what a ride takes the win. What a race. What a race to witness. We had three or four or five lead changes there. Ty, as I said earlier in the call, Ty didn't look that quick to me. Um, you did say that. Lindback, outstanding. Three points, Wolfenden two, one to Niels Christian Everson. Everson may be a little disappointed with that. Max Frick, by the way, was fourth. There was so much going on up front, we hardly mentioned him in the call, but I'm sure he had a good time. Well, he should have had a good time because what a hell of a race to watch from fourth position. Probably disappointed with the result, but not a bad race to be involved in. Great ride by Antonio Lindback. Ty Wolfenden, I felt, opened the door for him a little bit. Ty made a fantastic start. Managed to get across the top of Niels there on the way into the first turn. And from this, play, this position, it looks pretty fair. But here comes Lindback. Exits well off turn two. Gets a run up the inside of Everson here. Niels tries to fight back on the outside, possibly just not quite enough drive there. Fantastic turn. Antonio Limbach can do these sort of things on a motorbike. I've seen him do this sort of thing many times. Inside run up the straight. Ty Wolfenden glancing the fence to get himself into turn three. From here, Ty, I, I would have expected Ty to pull away, but we can see here Limbach follows him into the corner into turn three. Turns the bike early. Sets himself up, Ty's still on the outside, probably gone over the off camber a little bit. Rides a tremendous turn here, Ty. Puts his front wheel right over the wooden inner edge. Rides in the grip where no one's been, but Limbach turns back and straightens himself up. Look at Ty drifting. 
Limbach's got his wheels in line and drives through on the inside. Tie again, doesn't quite go as wide. He's inside his tire mark, but just a little bit too far with Limbach driving so hard, just a little bit tighter on the corner than he was. And have a look at all that hair. How jealous am I? How jealous am I, Crumpy? Well, I used to have hair similar to that myself, but um, not now. You're still going all right. <laughs> You've got more product than Woolworths too. <laughs> Pavlicki in red from gate one, Johnson blue gate two, Harris white gate three, Jepsen Jensen yellow gate four. It's a tight race here, we've got three riders on four points, so any of these guys that win the race can put themselves right up into the top three scorers for this evening's event. Look forward to this one with no little expectation. Pavlicki on the inside, Johnson last start winner. Epson Jensen's meeting oh. with the touch. Oh, no! Pieta Pavlicki has broken the tapes. He will most certainly be excluded. And he is filthy. Look at this from the start. Andreas actually creeped a bit. No distraction to Pavlicki. He's looking the other way. He's just taking a chance there. You can see Andreas creeping a little bit, and Pavlicki just went straight through them. Tapes didn't move a millimetre, and he's just had a crack. Poor old Chris Harris wore the ribbon around the neck there for a little while. This gives our second Australian track reserve, Chris Holder's younger brother, Jack, the opportunity to grace the circuit. Oh, this is so, so good, isn't it? Young There's Jack Holder. Big, big brother Chris going there to give him a pat in the back and G him up a bit. The coolest speedway riders you're going to come across these boys. Nothing seems to bother them. Don't tell me Chris is giving him a lend of a bike. No, doesn't look like it. The Holder brothers become the ninth success successive brothers to race in the Speedway Grand Prix. Quite, a, quite an unbelievable statistic, that. I'm trying to think of a few of the others. They, were, they would be the, the Dremel brothers from the Czech Republic, Alice and Lucas. They would be... Nicky Pedersen and his brother Ronnie. Uh, who else would it be, Tappy? <laughs> Too good for me. But I've got a headache, such as the excitement here at Etihad. Whatever it is, Chris Holder's looking at his brother, giving him a thumbs up signal from the other side of the track. This is very cool. Jack Holder, a youngster with enormous potential. He also rode well in the World Under 21 Championship. Absolutely. How proud are his parents going to be? They're here tonight. Big moment for the Holder family here. So Holder. Jack Holder. Yeah, Jotson, Harris and Jepsen, Jepsen. Holder getting a start because Pavlicki was excluded for breaking the taste. What a big moment for Chris Holder. Watching his young brother. Look at Jack looking to the, looking to the gods. I help bet, me, sir, help me. I bet Chris is more nervous now watching his brother than he is for himself. Ah, oh, this is great. This is sporting theatre at its best. So Holder on the inside. Another fall out of fury. He gained it well, Jack Holder. The young Aussie goes to the front. You're kidding. Jack Holder, race leader. Down the back straight away. The first time here come the challenges, though. Chris Harris. Is grinding away on the inside in a yellow helmet colour though. Michael Jepsen Jensen has taken the lead, but Jack Holder is giving it absolutely everything in second. Jack Holder went into that race with a plan, and his plan was to ride right round the inside line on the first turn. Very, very clever, keeping Andreas Jonsson and Chris Harris behind him. A bit more experience with Michael Jepsen Jensen to, to get past him, and here comes Andreas Jonsson challenging him up the inside, but he doesn't quite have the speed there. What a moment for the Holder family tonight. As we see, young Jack still maintains second place on the racetrack. The leader is Michael Jepsen Jensen from Denmark. Young Holder doing a fantastic job in second. This is somewhat of a fairy tale. The checkered flag is poised. Jepsen Jensen's going to win it, and Jack Holder finishes in second. A remarkable effort by the young reserve, and the crowd has gone nuts. What, what a ride for Jack Holder. He's a 201st Speedway Grand Prix rider, and he's gone out in his first ever race and finished set in second place. Great effort for Jack Holder. Showed experience, 
and poise on the first turn to be able to commit to the inside line and actually led the race onto the back straight. Great effort, Jack. Yeah, very heady ride by young Jack Holder. Two world championship points coming into the event as the reserve for that race. Well done. So Chris Holder still the top points man in the event so far at the completion of 12 heats. So things going along nicely for the Dane, Michael Jepsen Jensen. Now with seven points after his three rides. Let's have a look at the start. Jack Holder made a fantastic start from gate one. And as I said, he's committed to the inside line on the first turn. Right there, he looks like he's in a really strong position. Jepsen Jensen cuts through the middle of Chris Harris and Andreas Jonsson straight to the dirt where he wanted to be. But young Jack Holder's in the, he's clearly in front there. Just a little bit of experience and track knowledge because he hasn't been out yet. Showed, hugged the inside line. Jepsen Jensen's away, but he did a fantastic job for four laps there to hold off Andreas Jonsson and Chris Harris. Your thoughts on the racetrack at the moment? Obviously, they're doing some, some prep at the moment. It's gone uh, quite slick in parts, hasn't it? It's very slick on the inside. It, well, it looks very slick on the inside. And I see where the riders are riding. They're actually not hitting where it looks like the, the deeper dirt or heavier dirt is at the moment. It seems to be more about maintaining your corner speed and, and not locking up. And uh, Michael Jepsen Jensen there, he's doing a good job of it. It's, it's his sort of track. He's a bit of a, he opens the corner up well and keeps the bike running nicely. OK, we're hearing some news through. Let's try and make sense of this for you, that Greg Hancock has been disqualified from the results in Heat 9. I think it's something to do with an FIM sporting coat, David. Is that what we're hearing? An FIM sanction? I don't. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get more information of that. An, an infringement. And uh, we'll broadcast the facts when we are more aware of them. But we can tell you, Greg Hancock excluded from the results in heat race number nine. Well, this meeting has had everything so far. So that puts Greg back to five points for this event so far. So we're almost set for a start in heat number 13. Here's the starters now. Michael Jepsen Jensen, Denmark, Red Gate 1. Sam Masters, Australia, Blue Helmet Colour Gate 2. Antonio Lindback, outstanding in winning his previous race. White Helmet Colour Gate 3. Matej Zega from Slovenia. Yellow helmet colour gate number four. Lindback with the flowing dreadlocks. Backs away from the starting tapes. Some of the other riders, including Chris and Jack Holder, watching on for the pits. Look forward to this one. Jepsen, Jensen having a... Pretty decent meeting. The Dane on the inside. Masters will be looking to make a statement in this race. He's been a tad disappointing. Away, it's an away good on the inside. Masters not too shabby either. Oh, Lindback is down. The Swede is down. Midway between turns one and two. I can tell you he's moving around, has gone partially under the air fence over there. We saw there the Dane, Michael Jepsen Jensen, the best to begin. Masters was quick and very much in the hunt, heading towards the back straight for the first time. We are able to take the replays very shortly to see what the outcome was of that. We are hearing Antonio's conscious. Here we go from the reverse view. Antonio's made a good start. Jepsen Jensen on the curb around the inside. Sam, oh, Sam picked up a bit of a rut. No malice there at all, just picked up a little bit. Antonio's on the outside. Unfortunately, typical first bend incident there. You don't want to be going to the air fence any time, but you certainly don't want to be following your bike in there either. No, not at all. We can see from this angle, Sam's just picked up a little bit. Antonio's on the outside. Be a very difficult decision for the referee to, to exclude anybody for, for uh, that. They won't be. All four back. Sam Masters got away well. Good entry to the turn from Jepsen Jensen. Sam's just, there you go, just straightened up a little bit. Antonio runs out of room. Late, basically. 
lays the bike down before he hits the fence, but he still went in with some force. There's Anto Antonio. Have a look at that hairdo. That's Antonio walking back, all four riders for the restart, walking back with the race director, Phil Morris, there. Maybe he wasn't too happy about a part of the track there because you could clearly see Sam picked up a little bit. Nothing intentional, as we've said. He manages to give Frederick Lindgren a big smile as he walks past Freddie, slaps him on the back. I thought one of his strands of hair slapped Freddie in the eye. <laughs> if that was the case, Freddie would get concussion. Stop. There you go, Sam Masters apologising there. He knew he made a bit of a mistake. He's just said, hey, buddy, it was a track, really, not me. We'll take you down now to uh, Steve Brandon, our man in the pit, Steve. Thanks, David. Yeah, I've just uh, spoken to Phil Morris in this little interval here, and he's told me that the reason Greg Hancock was excluded by the FIM referee in Heat 9 was that he wasn't making a genuine attempt to race. Now, uh, it's quite a tough call. It's hard to, hard to sort of look at it on a very fast racetrack with the speed that Chris Holder was got, but the, the reason for the exclusion was not making a genuine effort to race. So, uh, Jason, uh, well, I mean, we're going to sit here again in a minute, guys, but Jason, we'll just have a chat about it. What's your take on it? I don't think any of these guys don't try to race, do they? Well, I, I'm a little bit surprised. I called it during the race. I, I thought Greg actually had a mechanical issue. Um, I could clearly see that he, that he slowed on the way into the first turn on the final lap. But Chris Holder's done nothing different than he's done in his previous two races. He's overtaken guys on the run into the finish line. Absolutely. Greg, I mean, to me, he's, lo he's on the fast line. He's got the bike working well. I mean, Greg's well in front there, but it doesn't, to me, look like... I mean, Greg might have gone to sleep a little bit like he did at Horsens earlier in the season, but, you know, I think it's very tough call to say that someone's not making a genuine attempt to race when they're going as fast as these guys do, so... Yeah, I, Steve, I agree. I mean, I race... I yep. raced myself, and I know that every time I got on the bike, I rode with 100% commitment. You Absolutely. don't become a four-time world champion like Greg Hancock well, without giving 100% commitment. Not, not making a genuine attempt to race There we go there. Call, that's but, where uh, it was we'll just there. He's gone a little bit wider, but to me, it looked mechanical. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. i got to say, I am absolutely perplexed by that decision. I don't think... That it, is a massive call. To say to the world champion, we're going to take your points off you because you didn't have a you didn't have a go. That is I, a massive call. I don't actually think I've come across that in my speedway career. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but uh, I can't remember any instance oh. like that. I am speechless, and that's a first. Wow, that's unprecedented. Heat 13. Jepsen, Jensen, Masters, Lindback, Zagar. Second time of asking. Looking forward to this one. We've got some real charges in this race. I'm, I'm interested to see how tight Jepsen, Jensen's going to go into turn one because that time I can see from our commentary position his rear tyre mark is very, very close to the inner edge. He almost had his front tyre on the Etihad Stadium turf and I think that there'd be the groundsman here would probably be pretty annoyed if he did do that. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'd love to hear what Greg Hancock's got to say about that. I want to have, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm very interested to hear what he says. But here we go for the restart of event 13. Jeps and Jensen got away first on the inside. Lindback not too shabby either. The Swede cuts back on the inside. Masters is in the mix as well. And charging on the outside is the Slovenian Mane Zega, who now goes to the inside of the Dane Jepsen Jensen. Good speedway here. The Slovenian flyer, Matej Zegar is the leader. Jepsen Jensen is not done with. He grinds away on the inside and Lindback isn't he fast? Limbach's fast, but the fastest man at the moment is Matty Zager. Like we said before, you never know which one you're going to get. But Michael Jepsen Jensen put himself in the right position there, but just missed his exit marks on the second bend and uh, allowed Zager to get up with him. But he's having a fair crack at him here. But Zager's riding a great line. He's covering Jepsen Jensen everywhere. Sensational speedway at Etihad Stadium. Here's oh, Lindback. Lindback for Scandinavians are side by side down the back straightaway. Lindback's got the better of it. Well, Jepsen car cut back on the inside. The checkered flag is out. Mate Zagar has taken the win. Three very valuable points to the Slovenian. Lindback, determined ride. You'll find that he was second. A proverbial will nut in advance of Michael Jepsen Jensen. How was the action off the second turn there? I think we changed leaders a couple of times in that race, Tappy, before we'd done a lap. So three points to Matej Zagar. Gold for him. Lindback was second. 
You see the leaderboard. And we now have three riders equal on eight points. Lindback and Jensen have had four rides. Of course, Chris Holder only the three rides. But Mede Zagar, now, what we tend to see with this guy, when he does this, he kicks on and goes on with it. As we saw there, Jepsen Jensen made a great start from the inside. He's headed straight out, but he's just not quite got the run he needed. Zagar's charged up the inside here. Let's watch him again from this angle. We'll see if he goes... Yeah, not quite, but he's certainly gone from gate one to four and a half there on the exit of the turn, allowing Zagar and Zagar to get up the inside of him. They charged in here. Jepsen Jensen's going for the dirt, but first race after a track break, not quite enough there, but uh, couldn't quite pull him in. He made a bit of an error again there, Jepsen Jensen, and um, actually picked it up on the way out of the corner. At this point, Limbach looks out of it. It was frenetic speedway, Jason. There's the winner, Adai Zagar. Very good rider, as we know. Capable of absolutely anything on his night. And Zagar tonight contesting his 76th Speedway Grand Prix. Here's the next race, Kilderman, Denmark. Pavliki, Poland. Kurtz, Australia. Another beauty in prospect here. And of course, uh, Smarslik on the outside in the yellow helmet colour as well, just to spice things up a little more. We'll see what the Dame Peter Kilderman can do after a win last time out. You've got three of the sports, undisputed rising stars in this race. No question about that. Kilderman, a Grand Prix winner, Pavlingi. Smarslik, can't wait for this. Oh, Waves in the air, Kurtz moves slightly at the start. Let's see how it transpires. Killed him and the Dane has gone to the front. Here come the challengers. Pavlicki sweeps by on the outside. Also looking quick out there is Marslick. He's in third. And uh, the young Australian Brady Kurtz is fourth, but not that far away from the lead. This race is going to open up now. Good first lap there from Pierre Pavlicki. Smarslik's building his speed up on the outside, third to second, and he's having a go at Pavlicki around the outside. Here he goes. Look at this. Smarslik's winding it on. Brilliant oh, speedway. Smarslik and Pavlicki, the two poles. It's a slugfest as they head down the back straightaway. And Brady, Bartos has gone to the front. And Brady Kurtz overtakes Peter Kilderman there, but he's run a little bit wide. Tremendous speedway. Last racing lap now. Kurt. Bartos Smarslik. Great manoeuvre by Brady Kurtz up the inside of Kilderman there. Don't, he's going to drift it wide again. No, just enough to keep Kilderman out. Great race, great ride by Bartos Smarslik there. He is the most exciting young rider I have seen come on the scene for a long time. Yeah, for sure. And like on the first lap there, you have to think he was almost out of the race. He was a long way back and uh, within two laps at outside line, building his speed up straight to the lead. You'll have every league club in the world trying to sign him. Smarslik, three points. Pavlicki, two. Kurtz, one. Good ride, Brady Kurtz, the Australian champion, having a big crack there. Reminding you, the rider he passed, Kilderman, did win his previous heat. So Smarslik now the top boy in this meeting after four rides on ten points. We're hearing some news come through at the moment that Greg Hancock is not taking part in the rest of the meeting because of the FIM jury's decision with what happened in the, the incident before. So I'm Max sorry. Brick, I'm sorry. But the decision is perplexing. And for Hancock to react the way he has. Well, I am lost for words. Well, there's obviously a reason for it, Tappy, and um, whatever the reason is, I'm sure there's plenty of discussion going on in the pits, and I'd, I'd like to actually have a word with Greg, hear what Greg has to say about it, but it does give Max Frick another opportunity to, to get out on track, so. So Max Frick, the Australian World Under-21 champion, first reserve for the meeting, comes back in for his uh, second ride tonight. He'll ride in red from gate one, Ty Wolfenden, the outgoing world champion, blue from two. His compatriot from Great Britain, Chris Harris, white from three. And Matchek Janowski, who has looked quick tonight in patches, 
will ride in the yellow helmet colour from gate number four. I'll tell you, you're going to be hearing a lot about this decision to take those points off Greg Hancock and his subsequent decision to sit the rest of the event out. I've never seen or heard anything like it, Jason. Well, as I said, Tappy, we have to hear what what's the official word is on it before we can comment too much. But um, we can see, obviously, how strongly Greg Hancock feels about it, that's for sure. Here we are. 8.15, young flick on the inside. Bizarre circumstances prevailing at Etihad Stadium tonight. The rider from gate two, Ty Wolfen had got a magnificent start and tears down the back straight. You can see Frick got into a spot of bother there. Meantime, Matek Janowski has uh, moved into second spot in front of the Australian. Ty Wolfen then in a race like this at the moment. Janowski's not really on the pace he would like to be. Ty's running away with this one, but it's still all action. And Max Frick's generating some speed here on the outside of Janowski. And I'm, I'm thinking with a good run, Harris up the inside. Where did Chris Harris come from? And Max oh. Frick goes down. Max Frick down. The dive bomb from the Brit. Chris Harris doing a heck of a job. In the second, his compatriot Ty Wolfen. It is so far in front, he'll be contending with terminal boredom. Any tick of the clock. Oh, Yanovsky. Second and third, fairly intense between Harris and Yanovsky. But Ty Wolfenden is going to cruise to victory effortlessly in heat race number 15. A race that Greg Hancock should have been racing in. So Wolfenden, three points. Yanovsky will pick up the two. So Ty getting his second win of the Grand Prix. That moves him along to uh, eight points. After four rides, we'll recap them for you. Wolfen and, oh, I'm sorry, it was Harris that got second. I think I said Janowski post-race. So Harris, two points, well done to him. And one to Maciek Janowski. I'm still in shock. Probably the easiest race, in, race win of the evening so far, certainly for Ty Wolfenden. Looks pretty content with that. As we can see there in the start, Ty made a good start. Clever first turn, in on the in on the curb. Smooth exit of the turn, but here's where the act... Frick picks up there. Oh, that's action down there. Frick picked up and glanced the fence. And here comes Harris up the inside on the last lap, and Frick... Oh, I'm not sure what happened to Max there, just overslid a little bit and managed... Here comes Harris up the inside. Great move by Bomber there. Frick goes down at the back of the screen. Janowski still trying to fight back up the inside of Harris. Good job by Max to get off the track. Incredible and unprecedented so, situation here. Yep, so Wolfenden, equal with uh, Zmarslik on 123 points and Doyle. So you've got three riders in contention for the silver medal at this juncture. So for Wolfenden and Smarslik, there's a whole lot to ride for at that, the back end of this meeting. And that man there, Chris Holder, is not too far behind them either. He has been remarkable tonight. Nils Christian Everson has been good too. Six points so far, red helmet, colour gate one. Chris Holder, eight points, blue gate two. Andreas Jonsson, five points. White gate three, Frederick Lindgren. His compatriot, four points so far in the event, yellow helmet colour on the outside of the start. I still can't believe the FIM's decision to strip Greg Hancock of those points. Very important race here for Chris Holden to cement his position at the top of the scoreboard. Niels Christian Everson, we spoke to him just before and you could see the pressure that he was under. The tension was there, you could see it in his eyes when he said he needs the points. So the Dane, Everson on the inside. A stellar field here. Chris Holder out of gate number two. And Chris is fighting for the race lead with Niels Christian Everson. There's nothing between them as they charge down the back straight the first time. The Aussie, though, gains the advantage, heads back onto the main straight, leading by one bike length. You can see in the white helmet colour, Andreas Jonsson, very fast again, the Swede. This is some race as they go down the back straight. Great first turn by Chris Holder and Niels Christian Everson, locked together around the first bend. 
This race isn't over. Niels has got some speed behind Chris, that's for sure. Chris is riding, putting himself on the right part of the track. He's moved out a bit more now to give himself a bit of a gap. But Niels is on the throttle and he's going to have a go up the inside here to see if he can get anything. But Chris, Chris Holder. Holder. Chris Holder at the moment looks pretty quick. Doing a tremendous job, the Australian, looking for his third race win of the night. Niels Christian Everson got good drive off turn two, but he won't be close enough. And Chris Holder, the 2012 world champion, takes victory with a wheel stander. The crowd going berserk here at Etihad Stadium. Great ride, Chris Holder. He is back to his best tonight. No doubt about it. This is the real Chris Holder. This is a real Chris Holder, and you can see his confidence building with every lap he's doing tonight. I'm so pleased for Chris, for him to be racing and riding the way he is at the moment. Great effort from Chris Holder. It was a tight first turn. He had to put it all on the line there with, with, his, with his bike position. He had to try and get himself across the top of Niels Christian Everson, and he managed to do it. It was a tight back straight. And uh, Chris held on to it. He charged into turn three and almost went too wide. So Chris Holder, 11 points for the event thus far. Smarslick in second on 10, then two riders. In fact, three, four riders on eight points. Tremendous Grand Prix. And Chris Holder flexing his considerable muscle here tonight. He's just, to me, showing that, that bit of arrogance. That we've seen. Great to see. Look at that. That's tight. Everson's over the curb. Not much between them there. Chris is in a drag race and just managed to pull it past Niels down the back straight. Great racing from those two. At this point here, I thought Chris had gone a little bit too wide. Yeah, and the other guys come back into it. But Chris was managed managed to be able to get himself back to the inside and start generating his speed again. Andreas Jonsson put Niels Christian Everson under a bit of pressure there on the first, second lap. But he uh, managed to keep Andreas behind him and tried to chase down Chris Holder. But at the moment, Chris is looking very, very fast and very smooth. He's hitting all the right marks on the track at the moment. And he finally made a start in that race. And that was the only chink in his armor so far as he hadn't made a start. In, in that race, he made a great start off gate two. The momentum is building for the Appen Express. OK, so the last round of qualifying heats coming your way at Melbourne's Etihad Stadium. And here are the starters. In Heat 17, Matej Zagar, last start winner, Red Gate 1 from Slovenia. The young Aussie Brady Kurtz, Blue Gate 2. The Swede Frederick Lindgren, White Gate 3. And Great Britain's Chris Bomber Harris in the yellow helmet colour from Gate 4. A win in this race for Zagar will, will guarantee him a, a semi-final position. With everything so tight in the point scores, he needs a win here to guarantee himself that starting that starting position in the semi-final. It's a crucial race for the Slovenian. You're looking at Chris Harris. Frederick Lindgren. He has been fast tonight. Frederick, look at this now. 8th and 9th, 87 points. They are equal on Christian Everson and Antonio Lindback. Reminding you, you must finish in the top eight to automatically qualify for season 2017. Zagar closest to camera. Brady Kurtz beside him. Away, Zagar got a beauty from the inside. Oh, Kurtz had a moment, but managed to save it brilliantly. Chris Harris, meantime, cuts back the Great Britain rider and moved into second briefly. Now he's been passed by the rider in the white helmet colour, Frederick Lindgren. And Lindgren now challenges Matej Zagar for the lead and takes it, but Zagar fights back on the inside and the Slovenian reassumes control. We don't know who's going to end up in front in this race. Zagar looks a bit more settled now, but Lindgren's fast off the fourth turn. He generates a lot of speed there. And here he comes again. He's having another go up the inside. Zagar's picked up a bit. Here comes Lindgren. Lindgren had to shut the throttle off momentarily there. Approaching turn number three. Zagar across the start finish line gets the yellow flag from Graham Stewart. Doing the flags here tonight at Etihad. Down the back straight charges Matej Zagar. He has a three bike length advantage over his nearest rival, Frederick Lindgren. It was a dashing ride by the Swede, but in the end, not good enough. 
Verde Zagar, a short of a semi-final berth now, you would think. The three points, very valuable in his quest for a top eight finish of the championship. He's just put himself right in with a great shot of that now with a race win there. It was a tough race. He had to earn his he had to earn his three points there. Freddie Lindgren didn't give it to him easily. It was a uh, plenty of close contact. Zagar three points. Lindgren two points. Harris a fighting one point. Brady Kurtz out the back. So what an event this is. Holder on 11 points. Marslick and Zagar equal on 10. And then we've got four riders equal on eight points. Ah, it doesn't get any better, Jason Crump. No, it doesn't get any better. And we can take a look at the start again. Zager wasn't away great, but he rode a very good first turn. Harris has cut right back to the inside there and looks like he's going to get a run. And then all of a sudden, Frederick Lindgren comes into the picture on the outside and cut back from the outside and actually managed to dive up the inside of Zagar there. But Zagar cleverly Turned the bike back and straightened up on the exit of the second bend there. So tight racing, but once Agar got two laps under his belt and generated a bit of steam, he was able to take it away from Lindgren. Tremendous slow-mo action from Etihad Stadium. As you said, he had to work hard for it. He had to work very hard for it. Lindgren, Lindgren was putting him under plenty of pressure, that's for sure. But. Um, there we can see the points there. Zagar moves up to 89 in seventh place. Janoski in eighth on 89. Lindgren ninth on 88. Everson tenth on 87. There could be runoff season on, couldn't there? We might get more than 23 heats. Yeah, there could just be, there could well be runoffs. That looks like young Jack Holder out in yellow in this race. Yep. So Jack Holder gets a, his second crack, replacing. Greg Hancock, who was scheduled to ride in this race in a yellow helmet colour from four. So Everson it is in red from one. His countryman, Hilderman, in blue from two. And the other Dane, Michael Jepsen Jensen, will ride in the white helmet colour from gate number three. Three Danes and the lone Aussie. Jack Holder would bring the roof down if he managed to sneak out here and do something special. But it, as we said about Zager in the last race, a crucial race for Everson this time to get himself into the semis. Yeah, Everson has the same pressure on his shoulders as Zager was forced to soak up in the previous race. So the young Aussie on the extreme outside against the three Danes is funny still. At the start when the taste blew, Everson away okay. Jepsen, Jensen away better. He goes to the front. Have a look at Jack Holder. He's in the mix having a big go here. Unfortunately, too much of a go. He lost the front end as he approached turns three and four. In the meantime, it is uh, Jepsen, Jensen, the race leader, as they head down the back straight. Jack Holder is up okay and moves his bike off the racing line. Great. So, Jensen is the leader in advance of Niels Christian Everson. Everson needs the points here, and Kilderman's pretty much out of the event, but not giving him an easy time. Jepsen Jensen out in front. Can't quite stretch on Everson to get away from him, and Niels is now putting him under a bit of pressure for the race win. And with a tremendous drive up the inside from Niels, he's managed to ride a perfectly smooth line around the middle of the corner and ride up the inside of Jepsen Jensen. Brilliant Great. speedway, absolutely top shelf speedway. Niels Christian Everson. That was a huge ride from Niels under extreme pressure there. Well done to him. That was that, that were points he needed again. He needed those points to put himself back in contention for a top eight spot. So Zagar initially and now Niels Christian Everson rising to the occasion. It is all on the line for them tonight. That was a brilliant ride by Christian Everson. Calculating and controlled charge to take the lead. Three points. Yeps and yes, and we think, gee, what more have I got to do? Yeah. Had a pretty decent race here and got pipped with a lap to go. Is Everson it? now equal with Chris Holder on 11 points. Three riders equal on 10, Jason, and two riders on eight. It's tight at the top, that's for sure. Jack Holder just walking back to the pits there. That was a really tough race for Niels because he first had to deal with Kilderman. He first had to deal with Kilderman's challenges from the inside. He had to deal with them, and then he had to set out after Michael Yeps and Jensen and try and get the lead. He, was, he put himself in the middle of nowhere, to be honest, on the first turn, Tappy. And that was tied up the back straight between the, the three guys at the back. Jack Holder goes down there at the back of shot. We'll see Jack go down here. I think it's just, just a bit of an overslide. 
No. Oh, maybe he had a mechanical. Actually, I think Jack Holder might have broken the chain there. I actually think his chain might have snapped. But um, out front there, Michael Jepsen Jensen. At this stage of the race, he probably feels pretty comfortable. But here comes Niels. Tremendous run off the corner. Drives up the inside of Jepsen Jensen there. Just holds a smooth line around the corner. Jack, yeah, definitely a mechanical there for Jack Holder. You can see the bike lost power from the slide, lost power, straightened up and down he went. Well yep. picked up, Jason Crump. Niels Christian Everson, 90 points in the championship. One point clear of Mede Zagar, Maciek Janowski. Wow, that is intense action in the middle of the pack. Absolutely, Tappy. Well, Frederick Lindgren's out of it because he's had his five rides. The pressure now moves to Maciek Janowski in the last qualifying heat, but we'll deal with race number 19 first. There are the starters on screen. Holder, the Aussie, comes from the outside. He's been able to string together three consecutive wins in this Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix tonight. Mark Webber, former Formula One superstar, and now a competitor in the World Endurance Championship. Musty Speedway's got a corporate box in line. Terrific start there. Nah, that was a jump start, that one, Tappy. He's been through the tapes once already, Pavlik. He's thrown caution to the wind. He's got away with it there, but um, the referee the referee pulls it back and all four riders back. He didn't touch the tapes that time. He tried to, but didn't manage it. We'll watch it from the replay. Yeah, clearly a jump start there from Pavlicki. At that point there, he would have been feeling pretty good. But you can see here the rider in white, Piotr Pavlicki just, just anticipated slightly the start. I bet halfway to the first corner, he was feeling pretty happy with himself until he saw the red lights come on. He's um, going to have to sit still because he's been through the tapes once already. He doesn't want to throw away another opportunity to race. Is it necessary for the riders to head back over to the other side of the stadium and get their clutches adjust, adjusted and so forth? It definitely is, but he's um, you can you can see that uh, they're probably just putting a bit of fuel in the cl the speedway clutch. One starts all it takes, Tappy. Whether it's a false start or not, it only takes one start to put the clutch under extreme pressure. The heat that's generated in the clutch in in that one one go is is enough to require it to be cooled down for 30 or 40 seconds. Expert comments from Triple World Champion Jason Crump, providing a terrific analysis tonight. This this race here, Ty Wolfenden and and Chris Holder. This is a bit of a head-to-head -head battle here. These boys are um, definitely going, going to be going for it. There's Mark offering a bit. Maybe Mark's offering a bit of advice to uh, Piotr Pavlicki's brother there. Also a pretty handy rider, Jemek Pavlicki. Wolfenden, Masters, Pavlicki and Holder. Equal with Niels Christian Everson in the event on 11 points. Of course, Niels has ridden his five heat races. Holder has a race in hand. So we'll see what transpires here. The first corner has been no place for the faint at heart. Right throughout the Grand Prix. And Pavlicki again, very quick from the middle of the racetrack. The challenge though coming on the inside from Ty Woffenden. Chris Holder is third and has a fair bit of work to do. In fact, Sam Masters is third and Holder's fourth. Good first corner from Ty Wolfenden there. Used his experience to ride around the inside, but Pavlicki's not letting him get away. And a tremendous battle at the back as well between Chris Holder and Sam Masters. Ty looks like he's committing himself to the inside of the racetrack at the moment. Pavlicki's trying to generate a bit of speed. He's actually putting Ty under a bit of pressure. Wolfenden the leader. Pavlicki in second, and he is not done with yet. Giving every indication a pass is on if he gets the opportunity. One lap to go now of Etihad Stadium. Chris Holder is third. Ty Wolfenden down the back straight for the last time. Pieter Pavlicki giving it everything in second, looking for an outside slingshot. Chris Holder. Wolfenden's got him covered. Holder's Chris, blown an engine. Chris Holder, Chris Holder has blown up 50 metres from the line and was passed by Masters, I think you'll find. Yeah, I'll confirm that. 
good right Wolfen in the meantime, but Holder didn't need that. Chris Holder certainly didn't need that. Cruel luck there for him. 50 metres from home, smoke just started bellowing from the back of Chris's bike. I don't know what, what's happened there. Well, it has been a night of high drama, has it? Look not? at it, it's cooking. Maybe he's, maybe he's cooked the clutch. Plenty of spare components in the pits. Yeah, plenty of spare components in the pits, Taffy. He'll be right. No points for Chris on that occasion, however. Three points to tie Wolfen at Pavlik. He got two. And Sam Masters, an unlikely one point. Hold up, had a shot to pieces, third position. And there it is now, so Wolfenton goes to the top of the board as well. You can see from the start here, Ty makes a good start from the inside. Pavlicki's there first, and Ty rides right round the inside, front wheel over the kerb all the way, bit of a pick up off the, off the corner there. Great run up the inside of the back straight. Chris Holder didn't get anywhere near the start he wanted to get off gate four there. Probably not the starting position want this time of the night. But uh, from that point there, Pavlicki looks like he's in a pretty good position, but Ty generated a lot of speed on his exit of the corner. Chris Holder looking down. I actually think what I said about the clutches, I think Chris Holder's burnt the clutch out. The, re the first start of the race, um, he, he might have uh, suffered some sort of clutch issue, and maybe he's just slipped the clutch a little bit, a little bit too much, and worn out at the end of the, at the, end of the race. We just saw a recap of the top four in the championship. Well, I called it a blown engine, so clearly I can, that I might can, not have been the case. I can actually smell that Chris Holder had burnt that clutch out. That is definite. That's a clutch fire. Yanofsky, you must have the biggest nose in the world. I mean, you can smell it. <laughs> That's extraordinary, Jason Crump. I am so impressed. So Yanofsky will ride in red from gate number one. Antonio Lindback in blue from two. Bartos Marslick in white from three. And Andreas Johnson in yellow from four. Crumpy has fallen apart. Pull yourself together, son. Underway, heat number 20. The last qualifying heat, Yanofsky, the pole. Good start on the inside. Here come the challenges, though. And there are a number of them. Look at this three wide speedway as they exit turn number four. Sensational stuff. Antonio Lindback has gone to the lead. Smarsling is having a big crack. He switches lines, went from the outside to the inside. And he draws level with Antonio Lindback. What about this for speedway? Take a bow, Bartos Smarslik. Lindback comes back up the inside. Smarslik's going to turn it back again and try and return the compliment. And here he comes. No, Lindback can just pull past him. Smarslik's going to go for the big run around the outside now. The other two guys, Jonsson and Janowski, not too far away. What a fantastic race, heat number 20. Hit. Lindback under siege from Bartos Smarslik. Smarslik inside the inside or the inside. outside. He cuts back inside. now. The checkered flag is out. Smarslik and Lindback got there. Antonio Lindback, his second win of the night. Great race. Absolutely unbelievable race. The loser there in that is Maciek Janowski. He, he gets one point there. That's no semi final tonight for Maciek Janowski. And yep. that means. No top eight spot for next year. Not good for him. How good is this sport? What a wonderful product it is. Lindback the winner in heat 20 in advance of Bartos Marslik. Here we can see the start from Maciek Janowski. Good start from Maciek off the inside. Smarslik's gone straight to the outside. He knows where he wants to be. All of a sudden, Lindback, Smarslik and Janowski are almost three wide into turn three. Lindback rides a great line to pull, pull clear for a little bit, but look at the effort from those three up the back straight. Not a lot of room left there. At this point, Janowski's looking pretty good, but all of a sudden Lindback finds that run. Smarslik gets a run. Lindback's out on the fence there. Smarslik does a tremendous cut back here to generate some speed up the inside. Oh, oh, nearly contact there. At that point there, Smarslik goes through on the inside, but just, just a little bit too wide and allows Lindback to, again, cut back up the inside. These guys, they don't know where to go on the racetrack because if you, 
if you go too tight, somebody will generate the speed on the outside. If you don't get your exit of the corner right and get a run down the straight, the guy that's behind you does a better job, he's going to pass you. Perfectly articulated. The smell of Chris Holder's clutch tappy is wafting through this whole stadium. It's, it's uh, unbelievable. It's definitely a clutch fire. I trust you. I trust you. I mean, seriously, the comment about the big nose, it was just a joke. But there, there was a time I thought you could have a cigarette under the shower, though. You don't that, smoke about That second place to Bartos Smarslik puts him to the top of the leaderboard after our five qualifying heats. On 12 points, Ty Wolfenden, Chris Holder, Niels Christian Everson, and Antonio Lindback all equal on 11. Zagar and Michael Jepsen Jensen equal on 10 points. Incredible night of International Speedway, World Championship Speedway. So the top eight, reiterating what I was just saying, Smarslik and the completion of his five rides on 12. The status quo applying to the remainder now, the 20 qualifying heats are concluded. 11 points, Wolfenden, Holder, Lindback, and Niels Christian Everson. What an event. Zagar, Jepsen, Jensen, Pavlicki. Just a little bit further back. I'm really interested to see what the riders are going to choose here for the gate stats. I don't think there's actually that bad a gate. Gate one might have won the right one and four, actually, but at this stage of the night, four looks like it's gone off to me. And I'm not so sure about gate one right now either because the guys off gate one, they've got to commit so hard to the first turn. You've got to get there. You've got to be prepared to run into the corner with your front wheel over the, over the curb and almost then straight line up to generate some more speed so you can exit the corner carrying a bit of momentum down the back straight. Definitely going to be some interesting semi-finals coming up here and still top eight places to play for for a couple of the riders. So track prep won't be long before this is concluded and we'll be into the semi-finals. We'll be heading down to Steve Brandon right now. Yes, here we are. We're going to talk you through the draw now. So our uh, first choice in semi-final one, Bartosz Smarzlik's going to come forward now and uh, make his pick eventually once he's spoken to Piotr Pavlitsky. But uh, Smarzlik first, Lindback second, Zagar third and Michael Yepsen-Jensen in this one to, to make the choices first. So Bartosz is now going to come forward and make his pick. Be interested to see what he takes, but he's going to go straight to the inside, gate one in red. So Antonio Lindback will be the next one to come forward. Maybe the race jacket gives it away, but we'll see what Antonio is going to do. Come on, Antonio. Let's see what you're going to take. All these choices. He's going to take gate three in white. So next to come forward, will be Matez Agar. Another solid point scoring effort from him. 30 points in the last two Grand Prix and another 10 tonight. So he's had a good finish to the season. He's going to come forward and go in gate two in blue. And last but by no means least, no choice, but uh, I hope he takes yellow because he's not going to have one at all if he doesn't take that. But there he is, Michael Jepsen Jensen is going to be in gate four in yellow. So just to recap, semi-final one, we'll see Bartosz Smarslik go out of gate one in red, Matti Zagar, gate two in blue, Antonio Lindback, gate three in white, and Michael Jepsen Jensen will be in gate four in yellow. So second choice now. So Ty Wolfen is going to come forward now. First pick in semi-final two. He's going to make no surprise, and he's going to go from gate one in red. Chris Holder, who had a burnt-out clutch in his last ride. He's coming forward now with his choice. Solid finish to the season. Hope we can cap it off well. Again, a little confused, these guys. They're uh, a little tricky. But uh, gate two in blue for Chris. Nils Christian Everson. All these guys forcing ways and looking for top eight finishes and automatic qualification for next year. He's going to go from gate four in yellow. And Piotr Pavlitsky, who's come in with eight points, is the eighth-place qualifier tonight and he is going to have gate three in white. So just to summarise the lineup for semi-final two, Ty Wolfenden red, Chris Holder blue, Piotr Pavlitsky white, and Niels Christian Everson yellow. Some difficult choices, Jason. Yeah, definitely, Steve. I'm uh, 
The biggest surprise there for me is Niels Christian Everson taking, get, choosing gate four ahead of gate three in the second semi. The, the rest were probably a little bit predictable. Maybe, maybe Lynn back a little bit taking gate three rather than two, but I guess he's thinking about the, the run on the way out of like the exit of the second turn rather than maybe the entry to the first turn. Semi-final number one comes your way. Top two here to transfer through to the grand final tonight. It's impossible to predict anything with a degree of confidence such as the depth and the standard of racing we've seen in this event so far. So a wonderful field of riders on the circuit now to do battle over four laps in semi-final one. Now the starters in this race, Bartosz Smarslik from Poland, red from gate one. Matej Zagar from Slovenia, blue from gate two. Antonio Lindback, white helmet colour from Sweden, gate three. And Denmark's Michael Jepsen Jensen in the yellow helmet colour from gate number four. All very worthy candidates. Lindback has really fired up, hasn't he? These look fantastic tonight. All, all four of these guys in this race, I, th I think we're in for a cracker because these are four of the guys that have ridden out of their skin. Zagar trying to save his Grand Prix place. Sparslik's had a few podiums in the Grand Prix, wants to win one outside of Poland. Jepsen Jensen, they're, they're young guys, they're hungry. The commitment's there for everybody to see. Not far away from the start. Plenty on the line here. If you look at Matej Zagar from Slovenia, closest to camera is Bartosz Marslik, the pole. Been so good tonight, the taste finds Marslik away okay. Zagar got the best start of the Slovenian charges to the race lead. Have a look at Antonio Lindback, the Swede on the outside, has found the fast way around Etihad Stadium. And he goes to the front, but the battle is on in earnest here. Matej Zagar in second, Bastos Marslik in third. And Jepsen Jensen out the back. What about this for Speedway? Smarslik up the inside into second place, but Zagar's hit the dirt. Back past Smarslik on the outside. These guys are racing for keeps here. Smarslik on the outside trying to generate some speed. He's past Zagar again. Great racing. Antonio Lindback is the leader. Bartos Smarslik into second. They will be moving through to the final if they stay there. Zagar will give it everything inside the last lap, but he's too far back. Jepsen Jensen is a long way back in fourth. Antonio Lindback, his first lap was electrifying. That set up the winner. He takes it, moves through to the Australian Speedway Grand Prix final. Bartosz Smarslik will join him by virtue of his second place here. Matej Zagar will be very disappointed. And Limbach's bike's broken down after the race. That's not what you want before the final. What a race, Tappy, what a race. Smarslik again, not great from the start, generated his speed, passed Zagar, lost the second place to Zagar, passed him back again. All behind that man out front, Antonio Limbach. He's, he's come on strong, he's, he's looking very, very quick. Yeah, Lin. It was a conservative start of the night for him. Lim back in his opening ride. He only got one point third. And he's just gone bang, bang and got better and better throughout the course of the Grand Prix. And that's the way you want to do it because you want to make the big final and you want to win the big final at the end of the night. How good was the first lap of that race? That was one of the races of the night so far. Look. We can see from the start, Zagar gets away, gets over the top of Smarslik. Limbach hasn't even bothered. He's gone straight for the outside line. First past Smarslik, then past Zagar. Tight first, tight turn here. Zagar's tried to push him out, but that's where Antonio wanted to be. And at this stage in the race, you're thinking that those two are away. But here comes Smarslik right round the outside of Zagar to tie up the crucial second spot and put himself into the final. But a great ride from Limbach, and you can see what it means to him there. He's happy as, look at him. Great job by the Swede. So semi-final, number two is next. 
This promises to be every bit as good. You can see there on the points, Hancock's won at Smarslick, 127 points in second. Wolfenden in third on 126 points. And of course, Ty Wolfenden comes to the starting tapes now to contest semi-final number two. He's joined by Chris Holder, who will come out of gate two. Both equal on 11 points at the event, as is Niels Christian Everson, who will start from gate four. I think the way it stands for Niels, he needs he needs to make the final to to over to, to, to get himself a qualification spot. Of course, uh, Pat Lickie is the other rider here. And he's been electric off the start at, at different times tonight, but come on, come on, Chris Holder. Wolfenden on the inside. Oh. Holder, didn't get a great start. Oh no, something's gone wrong with his bike. Has it red lights on anyway? No, I think I think Wolfenden jumped the start a little bit there. It couldn't have been Pavlicki again. Couldn't have been him again. Let's wait and see the replays and see what happens, but I'm definitely sure that somebody moved at the start. Here we go. Wolfenden in red. Yeah, little jump from Ty there. Probably just enough to disturb Chris, actually, because Chris is off gate two looking over the top of him. Let's look at again here. Here we go. Ty, yeah, tiny movement from Ty, just enough to put Chris Holder off. So Eagle Eye Crump strikes again. And can smell a burnt clutch at 3,000 paces as well. No, I don't smell any burnt clutches at the moment, but I can see Chris has got his clutch being cool. So... Doesn't need that same thing to happen again, that's for sure. Ty Wolfenden showing how, how edgy he is actually at this part of the night as well, because for Ty to for Ty to be a bit bit jumpy at the start. Pretty unusual. Ty just getting some words of wisdom from Peter Carlson. And now Wolfenden fires his bike up again and heads around to the start line. Chris Holder, the Australian, is the first rider to make his way back. Grand final berth up for grabs for the first Steve. two home here. Chris having a look at the state of the track. There's the seventh, eighth, ninth, yep. tenth situation. There, there we go, that's how tight it is. Niels needs one point. To, to stay ahead of Matty Zagar, otherwise there'll be a runoff. If Everson's last in this race, we have a runoff between Everson and Zagar for the last spot. Wolfenden in red, Holder in blue, Pavlicki in white, Nils Christian Everson, the Dane in yellow from gate four. Wonderful sporting theatre under the big roof here at Etihad Stadium. The business end of the night. And the business end of the season, of course. Second semi-final. They're gone, even start walking them again. Well, Holder, OK. Pat Lickie cuts back and moves into second. Niels Christian Everson looking for racing room. Wolfen to the leader. Here's Holder. Chris Holder on the inside, explodes out of the pack. On the inside of Ty Wolfenden, nothing between them. Wolfenden across the start finish line, the leader. Holder desperately looking for grip. Up high on the track, he saw what Lindback did in the previous semi. He's going to have a go up there too. What a race here, Jason. Go Chris Holder, he's generating the speed on the outside. He's overtaken Ty Wolfenden on the outside. Terrific ride by Chris Holder. You can see he's got speed tonight. You can see he means business. Niels Christian Everson at the back racing for his Grand Prix future here. He's cut back up the inside of Pavlicki here. Should put himself, should put himself in the third place. But Pavlicki's turned back and he's trying to get up the inside again. Yep, Pavlicki's almost there. Everson's raced in. Meantime, Holder enters turn four the final time. He takes the win in semi-final number two. Wolfenden second, Niels Christian Everson was third. He got the one point he needed. That puts Niels Christian Everson in a top eight automatic qualifying spot. But what about the ride from Chris Holder? Generated his speed on the outside. Great to see. I haven't seen Chris. Tell you what, Tappy, I haven't seen Chris Holder ride like this for three years. I agree. I agree. 
That is undeniable. He is back. The Appen Express. So wheel stands meantime on the track as you look at the the point score. Holders, Marslick, Lindback, all scoring 14 in the Grand Prix. Wolfenden 13. This has been some event tonight and cannot wait for the final. Chris Holder on screen, winner of semi-final number two in sensational fashion. Wolfenden looked good. Chris had to produce something special, and he did. He sure did. Ty got away from the start. Chris actually lifted right at the last instant on the way into the turn. Probably made his decision for him. He had no choice. He just had to go. Great burst of speed from straight round the outside of two and, and put himself in an inside challenge for Ty Wolfenden from the, for the lead. Didn't get it all his own way there, though. He, God, what a great run there from Chris. Pavlicki and Everson at the back, racing shoulder to shoulder for, for their point. But Chris Holder there, great run around the outside, generating his speed. And actually pulled away from Ty Wolfenden in the end. It bodes well for Chris Holder heading into the final, that's for sure. There's been so much to enjoy here tonight. I know it's a, it's a cliche, it's had it all, but it absolutely has. Well, Greg Hancock has won the World Championship. We are yet to determine who it is that has won the Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Let's head down to Steve Brandon. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, we're ready for the draw. I think we've got two of the, two of the four protagonists so far, Chris Holder and Antonio Lindbeck waiting. Ty Wolfenden's got to come forward yet. Uh, yeah, I'll catch my breath myself, but um, what a meeting this has been. So we've got them, we've got Bartosz Schmarslik's arrived now, so... If you're happy, I think we'll get these guys underway, so we'll get Chris, Chris Holder to come forward and uh, make his pick for the final. So Chris is going to make his gate choice for the final. So Chris is making it a tough choice, but he's going to have gate one in red. So Antonio Lindback's the second man to choose tonight. He's going to come forward. He's got a white race jacket on. He went from there. Went from there before. He's going to do it again. Gate three in white for Antonio. Bartosz Schmarslik is next. He's coming forward, and he's going to take gate two in blue. And Chris Holder, uh, sorry, Ty Wolfenden's going to come forward and he is going to have, yeah, Ty, you're going to have gate four in yellow. You may not want it, but you have no choice. So just uh, to recap the final of the 2016 QB Insurance Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix, we're going to see Chris Holder in red in gate one, Bartosz Smarslik in blue in gate two, Antonio Lindbeck in white in gate three, and Ty Wolfenden in yellow in gate four. I can't believe Smarslik's thinking about changing bikes before the final right now out on track. He's surely not. Well, that's a big call. Unless he'd already made the decision to ch change one, and he is now thinking I might go back on the original. No, no. Because that would be quite extraordinary, a decision like that. Probably been done before. I'm sure Thomas Goddard's probably done it before, but um, he hasn't done it. He's back on the back on the same bike, and uh, Chris Holder's doing some work down there on gate one. He needs a great start, and let's hope he can get it. Here we are. The final is next at Etihad Stadium. The grand final of the QBE Insurance Australian FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Australia's Chris Holder. Red helmet, colour gate one. Poland's Bartos Marslik, blue gate two. Sweden's Antonio Lindback, white gate three. Great Britain's Ty Wolfenden, yellow gate four. A gripping night of international speedway. It all comes down to this. The Aussie first choice of starting gate by virtue. We forgot to talk about one thing, Tappy. Ty Wolfenden and Bartosz Smarslik are racing for the silver medal as well. Yeah. There's, Chris Holder doesn't care about any of that. Limbach doesn't care about any of that. They want to win the Grand Prix. The other two guys have got medals on it. Here we are, the final. Away, Holder got a very good start on the 
the inside. Look at Lindback cutting back in the white helmet colour. They are going for it down the back straight away. The Australian is the race leader, but he's under heavy pressure as they head onto the main straight by Antonio Lindback. Ty Wolfenden looking the goods as well on the inside. Wolfenden moves into second spot. Smarslick is out the back. A great race between Antonio Lindback and Ty Wolfenden. But Jason Crump, Chris Holder is the leader. All I can say is just hang on to it, Chris Holder, and keep it going because it was a fantastic start, a great first turn. And Chris Holder just needs to win this Grand Prix tonight so we can see the best of Chris Holder in the next year or two. The Abbott Express. Express, Chris Holder across the start finish line. One lap of the Etihad Stadium to negotiate. The second place rider has not given up the chase, but Chris Holder, what a night it has been. As he heads off turn four, he wins the Australian Grand Prix. The Aussie takes victory in his home Grand Prix. That has got to be as special as it gets in sport. Fairy tales do come true. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. I feel for Chris Holder. I'm so, so happy for the man. He's, he's What he's been through with the injuries he's had, shown tremendous character to come back from that. Great ride. The, the, wind's, been, the wind's been on its way, and I'm so pleased for him. It's so good. Well done, Chris Holder. Oh, it's hard to find the words here. Yeah, hey, I am so pleased for Chris. I've got a lump in my throat the size of a watermelon. <laughs> and um, I'm guessing that ties up the silver medal for, for Ty Wolfenden and bronze for Bartos Smarslik. So Ty Wolfenden runner-up in 2016, that has been confirmed. I'm so happy for Chris Holder. It has been a long, long time, as we told you before the race. 43 Grand Prix without a win on top of the world in 2012. Then his world fell apart with very serious injuries that a lesser man would have considered quitting the sport. And he admitted yesterday he did consider quitting the sport. Such was the severity of the foot injury he sustained. And that is special. Incredible event. So the final result in the finale of the Australian Grand Prix, Holder three points, Wolfenden two points, then Vartos Marslik officially placed third. But Holder, he's tally for the event 17 points, Ty Wolfenden 15. Chris Holder doesn't want to leave the track. <laughs> he's soaking this up for everything that's worked. I don't blame him. Uh, yeah. Jason Crump is very happy beside me, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching around the world. I just want to watch the replay of this start because Chris made a great start from gate one, knew, knew what his plan was, into the corner tight, straight up to the dirt. At that point, Wolfenden looked like he was in a good spot. Limbach was challenging up the inside. Perfect entry to turn three, out on the dirt, no mistakes. Working it, working the bike all the way to the corner. Great to see Chris Holder feeling confident enough to, to get into the turn like that. From that point on, he's actually he's actually been a couple of times the only rider during the races that didn't really look like he was going to get past. Awesome effort from him. He got better, Jason, as the night went on, as did Antonio Lindback. Yeah. But Chris was supreme. Chris was supreme, and you know the the first couple of races he. You know, he rode hard, he rode hard for the points. He didn't make particularly great starts, but he was working on it. He was trying to figure things out and, and build his momentum up as the night went on. He knew that towards the end of the night, if he was gonna get into the main events, that he needed to that he needed to be making the starts. And um, as I've said a hundred times, I'm just so pleased for him that he was able to do that and, and put it all together. He's, this is gonna be one of the most emotional victory podiums I think that we've, we've seen for a long, long while. That was his fifth Grand Prix victory in his career. His 23rd final. Oh, the crowd have got their money's worth and then some haven't they? Do hope you've enjoyed our coverage around the world. It has been an unforgettable night.
absolutely top shelf racing. And once again, underlying, or underlining rather, the spectacle, the pure theatre that is International Speedway at the top level. There is nothing else for mine in motorsport that comes close. Let's, without any further ado, hear from the winner here tonight. Chris Holder, Cardiff 2012, far too long ago. This piss is all over that, mate. This is, uh, this is awesome, man. I've been working my butt off to get to this back here, and, um, you know, sometimes you're chasing your tail and don't think you're getting anywhere, but that's so good. I'll forgive you, people. I'll, give you for, I'll forgive you for those words, but uh, we spoke yesterday about a number. That number. That one. Your 43rd. Grand Prix since that victory in Cardiff. There's an omen in there. Oh, you come and see me today and said, you know, this is your number four, this is your 43rd Grand Prix. And um, that clicks something in my head maybe. And he's here tonight floating around. And you know, <laughs> I could cry, but this is unreal. And that's for you, D Davis. Just to finish the season on a high, the winter break to regroup and come back strong in 2017. Yeah, man, it's um Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I've had, you know, the roughest few months that I don't even want to talk about, but, you know, this is a big F you to that. And just last question, to be able to do it here in front of the family in Australia? Oh, man, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're hanging out the box out there. I've got some over the start line, and um, we'll be celebrating tonight, that's for sure. Uh, congratulations, enjoy the National Anthem, great job. I hope Maxie's at home watching me, buddy. That's for you too, man. Woo! Yeah, Maxie, Chris's young son. We'll recap the championship standings at the end of an enthralling 2016 FIM Speedway Grand Prix World Championship. Greg Hancock, the title holder, 139. Ty Wolfenden securing second here tonight, 130 points. Bartos Smarslik on the podium, 128. Chris Holder just outside the top three, 126. And Jason Doyle, Yeta Pavliki, Antonio Lindback was the next man. Here's Chris. From his perspective, that is exactly what he needed to re-establish himself at the top of his game. We need to be upstanding, Tappy, for the Australian National Anthem. I am standing up, I'm just short. How good is it? So Chris Holder, the Australian, storms to victory in his home Grand Prix. Given what he's been through, it's extra special. It's been a long while for Chris. It's it's four years. It's four years ago. I was in the last Grand Prix he won. That's how long ago it was. Ty Wolfenden securing a silver medal. Wrapping it up tonight, of course, in this final round of the championship. Bartos Marslik, Jason. Uh, he's got some future, the kid. Huge futures. Huge, huge future for him and... Uh... You know, he, he can be very proud. First year in the Grand Prix Series as a full-time rider, and 
third place bronze medal. That's a, that's a great effort. It's actually a little bit scary how good he's going to be. Yeah, you know, the result's been there this year and I wish Bartos all the best. He's a great kid and, um, you know, but you know how it, how it is in sport. You have to back every result up with a, with a better result next year. The poor kid's fourth next year. It's been a bad year for him, but um, his eyes are forward and he certainly wants to be progressing all the time. But here's our man, Chris Holder. Australian Speedway Grand Prix winner 2016. I am so proud of Chris. I'm, I'm so happy for him. You had a lump of the size of a watermelon in your throat. I don't know what I had. I was <laughs> crazy. Basketball? Bigger. For him, it's just so important. He can now build on that and approach 2017 with more confidence than he's had for several years. Third place in the World Championship in your debut season for Bartos Smarzlik. What a great result. Well done. Well done, young man. Well, the presentations are going on. Chris Holder's making his way over towards the crowd, actually. That's good consistency from Ty Wolfenden. World champion last year. Backing it up with a silver medal. Takes some doing. A couple of years in a row in the, on the podium. Not an, easy, not an easy thing to do that, that's for sure. Great effort by Ty. Outstanding effort by Ty Wolfenden. Who, who got a little bit lost the last few rounds leading into this, didn't he? Can I say this, Tappy? Yep. 2016 Speedway World Champion. World Champion for the fourth time. Mr. Greg Hancock, one of the one of the toughest but fairest competitors I ever raced against. And again, I'm so happy for Greg. Um, liked by everybody. Great ambassador for Speedway. And. Um, pretty much a role model for all the younger fellas in the Speedway Grand Prix series. He's a legend. There's no other way of saying it. No doubt about that. Adios, congratulations to Greg Hancock. Has been so outstanding for so many years. First came to Australia in 1995 as a part of the inaugural Series 500 International Speedway Masters. Returned a couple of times thereafter. And of course, he won the inaugural staging of the Australian Grand Prix, held in Sydney in 2002. Then a 13 year break before the world's biggest circus returned down under with the staging of last year's event here at Etihad. He won that too. Tonight, just a bizarre set of circumstances involving him. But no one in the world will begrudge him the moment he currently enjoys. A nicer human being you would never meet. Great competitor as well. Um, fair, but hard. And here comes the champagne for the boys.
So Greg Hancock, Ty Wolfenden, Bartosz Marslik. The top three in what has been an epic season. Bigger and better, the 2017 Speedway Grand Prix Series. Promises to be. A number of key dates already announced. Likewise with the uh, Monster Energy World Cup, World Team Cup. So much to look forward to. Greg Hancock, the 2016 World Speedway Champion for the fourth time.